Hey guys, Andy back here from Mediocre Hobbies. Um, today with a more focused video. Usually on these uh, videos, I show you how to paint an entire model or an entire thing from start to finish. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be picking a specific part and that is giant skin. So the Mega Gargans brought up by Games Workshop. Um, I posted them up on a bunch of my social medias, the, the two that I've painted so far. And the recurring question is, how did you do the skin? Some people are under the illusion that I put in a lot of time and work to achieve the skin that I did. That is just not the case. With um, contrast or washing a few dry brushes, um, I was able to achieve quite a nice standard. Um, I'm gonna show you guys in the video how I did that. And obviously this technique can be used for skin on all sorts of different monsters, creatures, and skin of any kind. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, stick around to the end. Thanks. Okay, I realized in the intro that I said a contrast, a wash and a couple of dry brushes. It's actually a contrast and three dry brushes. That is all you need to achieve this. So the first color that we are going to use is Dark Oath Flesh Contrast. It's quite dark. Um, it, it's a fantastic base coat for, for skin. Um, and as you can see here, I am going to lash this on the miniature. I'm gonna use quite a substantial amount um, at a time, just so it, it doesn't dry so quickly on the miniature. And it, it with the amount you put on, you can you kind of push it around into all the, the nooks and crannies and all the crevices that you need to get it. So as you can see, I keep going back to the palette and getting another dollop, if you will, of the contrast. <clears throat> Some of the things to remember about contrast is, uh, contrast dries waterproof, which means that, you know, uh, if contrast comes around the other side and hits it again, it won't reactivate it. So what you want to do, especially with something like a leg is, as you're painting around the leg, when you come around full circle, you want the contrast that you're still painting and the contrast you paint at the start to be both wet so they blend in. If you take too much time and the, the starting bit dries, you will literally get a visible line of contrast and then you're painting over it. It's kind of bizarre, but that's why you gotta paint a little bit faster with contrast um, just to make sure that the entire section you're painting, every piece of it, all the contrast is still wet as you're going along and then move on to the next section and the next section, next section, follow that, uh, that rule and um, you'll have much better results. So I tend to, like put quite a lot of it onto that section and then afterwards like I'm doing now I just kind of dab and poke at it with the brush trying to remove the bits that are a little bit too heavy in places see what I'm doing here removing that bit until I'm quite happy with the the contrast layer I like the bit of his leg there quite happy with that and then I'm going to move on to things like his feet and slowly move around to the rest of the thing but models like this are great because as you can see like the, the bandage around his wrist is a clear stopping point and um, his waist is a clear stopping point so that leg becomes one piece so you just do that piece, then you move on and do the next piece, the next piece, the next piece, it works out great. So I've got everything but the head done here now, so moving up with that. It doesn't matter which part of the miniature you hit with the dark oak flesh, all of the other parts will be painted afterwards. Um, it's usually a good rule of thumb when you're painting a miniature, um, they call it dressing the miniature, so you paint the part that's closest to the body of the miniature and then work your way out. So for instance, if I wanted to paint his neck lace first, and then all those straps around his waist first, and then I was going to do the skin, I'd be painting past all those straps and stuff, and it would just be a nightmare. You'd be hitting it with the skin tone. Whereas if you do the skin first, it's a lot easier to paint all those ropes and dangly bits over the skin than it is the under. I always did enjoy painting uh, faces. Um, there's just so much detail in them. All the different features we have, especially models like this with all the wrinkles and cuts and bruises and stuff. Um, and the way I paint with all the contrast and shades, um, they work a treat, I absolutely love it. <clears throat> this is my uh, third Mega Gargant that I'm still not bored of painting them. They are just so much fun. Hard to hold in front of a camera though, as you can see. And here's what it looks like with the full contrast applied. As you can see, there's still a few blotchy bits, um, still a bit heavy in places. But as the dry brush layers go on on top of that, um, you'll see it covering up a lot more and it'll just start to look like unnatural skin. It looks really, really good. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the first dry brush and we're gonna use Cadian Flesh Tone. Now my secret weapon to dry brushing these miniatures is this brush. It is a simple contouring brush. I got it from pennies. It only costs like a euro or two. Really soft, really fat bristles. Um, it makes a fantastic dry brush for miniatures like this. Um, where you want to catch detail on large flat surfaces um, where a normal dry brush might be a little bit too harsh for. So you'll see the effect I get now with uh, his leg. As you can see, it's almost like uh, like contouring, like brushing the miniature as opposed to dry brushing it. And it just wants to lightly catch um, 
the skin, the muscle, and all those beautiful little dents they put in the skin, which makes it perfect for dry brushing. And you can see the difference already. Any blotches that were stuck on the leg or anything that was a little bit too heavy, that they're all gone. It just immediately makes it look fantastic. Look at the difference between the foot and the leg there after one quick dry brush, it's insane. So I'm gonna quickly do this across the entire miniature. I'll bring you back in a second to show you um, the process I did on his face, um, but everything else is pretty much the same as what I'm gonna show you here. And here we go, dry brushing the face. Like I said before, it's quite a uh, hard model to hold in front of a camera and paint, but we'll, we'll do our very best. So lightly hitting the top of his head, his features, nose, lips, ears, his cheeks, um, and just go back and forth. Don't press too hard with the brush or you'll, uh, you'll put too much paint on, it'll get like a smudge and it won't look great. You just really want to lightly brush the, uh, the miniature with this brush. Like I said, I've, I've posted my uh, giants up a few times before and I do get a lot of questions about how I did the skin. I have told people I'll do a video at some point, so here it is. Right, a second dry brush, Kids Love Flesh. All we're gonna do is exactly the same thing we did before, but slightly lighter on the brushing. Every layer of dry brushing should be less. You wanna show some of the color we did before and uh, just catch that very raised edges again. So same thing, as you can see, I'm picking one direction, um, going quite light, small bit of paint. Hard to notice until you look at the piece we did versus the piece we've already done for the last and you can see the difference. I mean, the skin that you can see there on the leg, it already looks like I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, like literally individually layering parts of that of the leg or the foot, which just, as you can see, I did not do. You can see all the shading around his, his knee and those muscles on his thigh. I love it. Same thing we're gonna go for his upper body and his face, very lightly now. That's the trick when you do this. You don't wanna go overboard with the paint on his face. You definitely want that to be um, a focal point. People are gonna be looking at his face when they pick up the model. Um, so you wanna be careful with it. Really light brush strokes like this. The difference it makes as well, once you even just black out the beard and eyebrows and his teeth and stuff, um, it just makes everything look so much neater and the skin stands out a mile. Brilliant, delighted with that. And then what we shall do now is move on to the final dry brush, which is going to be Flayed One Flesh. Um, I like to finish off with like creamy bone colors for most things, I just feel like it works. So once again, it's gonna be a lighter dry brush again to the first one, and it's just to catch those very raised tips. Sorry, sometimes my camera likes to focus on my hand more than it does the model. It's kind of a pain, but needs must. And there you go, that's, that's one leg section complete. And as you can see, it, it does look amazing. Once you complete that on the entire giant, um, you're 80% there to a fully painted miniature. All he's got is a few bits of cloth, a turtle shell in his stomach and, and a weapon, and he, he's kind of there. So once you get the skin all done in this model, if you spend another hour base coating or washing, then you're laughing. The miniature is gonna be rocking it. And here it is on the face. Like I said before, just go quite light on his face. Um, you just want a very last kind of catch the tips kind of swipe with the brush. Catch those ears, bridge of his nose, a bit on the lips, and a bit on the wrinkles on his forehead. And there we have it. All in all, I'd say it took me about maybe five, six minutes to apply the first coat of Dark Oath Contrast to the entire skin section of the miniature. And then each dry brush took 30 seconds to a minute to achieve. So we're talking about less than 10 minutes of actual work to get your giant from not even begun to paint it to this. I mean, I think that just works a treat. And there we have it guys. As you can see, we've managed to achieve what we set out to do. We've got the skin done on the War Stomper Mega Gargant. Um, I used a total of four paints um, and two different brushes. That is all that's required um, to achieve what we did. I really hope you guys find the video helpful. Um, hope you think that it's easy to achieve and that you can go off and do the same thing to, to your monsters or your gargants. Um, if you did, you liked the video, show some support, subscribe to the channel, um, like the video, 
And like I always say, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will do my very best to respond to every single one of them. I help you guys out as much as I can. See you guys in the next video. Thanks. Remember, the plan is simple. We paint them all.